Kern motioned to the grab irons on the caboose's side. Get up there. The kid took hold of the crude ladder, swung up onto it, and began to climb. Here on the outside of the car, the wind created by its runaway journey down the long hill was even stronger. It slammed at the kid and threatened to tear him loose from his precarious position. He pulled himself up by the grab irons as quickly and carefully as he could, and when he reached the top, he sprawled on it and spread his arms and legs for stability. Kern poked his head in the gun above the level of the caboose's roof. Get down there to that brake wheel! The kid lifted his head and saw the wheel sticking up on a metal post at the caboose's rear end. Still spread eagle, he worked his way to the center of the car and then was able to get up on hands and knees and crawl. After a few feet, he trusted his balance to stand up and trot toward the brake. He hoped the caboose wouldn't give a particularly violent lurch and throw him off before he got there. He reached his objective and grasped the wheel, feeling a little better once he had something to hang on to. By now, Kern had holstered his gun and climbed up on top of the caboose, too. The kid turned the wheel, putting his strength and weight into the effort. The shaft turned and forced the brake pads against the wheels. The caboose slowed, but only barely. Kern reached the wheel, grabbed it, and threw his strength into the effort, too. The caboose slowed more. The bottom of the grade was coming up quickly. They renewed their struggle with the wheel. The caboose was still going fast enough when it reached the bottom that it thumped heavily, but it didn't come loose from the rails and crash. And Kern had been right. Once on the level again, it began to slow down even more. Now that they were safe, Kern's hand flashed toward his holstered gun, but the kid moved first by a heartbeat. He tackled Kern around the waist, and both of them sprawled on the caboose's roof as they continued to roll along the track. Kern smashed a fist into the kid's wounded side. For a second, the pain was blinding. The kid did his best to ignore it and rammed the heel of his hand under Kern's jaw, forcing the gunman's head back. Kern hit him in the side again. The kid rolled so the wound would be out of Kern's reach and tried to bring a kick around. Kern grabbed his leg and heaved up. The kid had no choice but to go with it, but as he twisted, he looped an arm around Kern's neck and dragged him along too. Both of them rolled toward the roof's edge. The kid slapped his other hand against the roof and pressed hard, trying to slow himself. He fought for any sort of purchase. But while he was doing that, Kern rammed an elbow into his solar plexus and forced all the air out of his lungs. The kid slid off the roof and plummeted toward the ground. 